He is there. Mm. Okay, so the meeting is live streamed. Uh, you can start, Dr. Prati. Yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Pratik Ranjan Nai, currently working as a senior resident in Manipal Tata Medical College, Jamshedpur. And I extend a warm welcome to you on behalf of the PG seminar coordinating team. So, so moving ahead in the series, uh, we are here on the Okay. Uh, currently working as a senior resident in Manipal Tata Medical College, Jamshedpur. And I extend a warm welcome. We are on the IAPSM eConnect platform once again with another interesting topic that is uh, NFHS 5 methodology. Which, uh, which, which will include the survey objectives, how sample size was calculated, sample design, data collection, data quality assurance, data processing, and key indicators. So we hope you all will learn a lot of valuable points from today's presentation. I'm honored to be here as the moderator for this session. We are really fortunate. We are really fortunate uh, to have Dr. Lakshmi Khan Duvedi sir as the facilitator an expert for this session with substantial experience in this field. So Dr. Lakshmi Khan sir is currently working as professor in the Department of Survey Research and Data Analytics in International Institute of Population Sciences in Mumbai. Sir has also worked in uh, School of Health System Studies in Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Sir has carried out the computation of sample size, designed the survey, computed survey weight, and standard error for selected demographic and health indicators in uh, the fourth, fifth, and the sixth rounds of the National Family Health Surveys. Apart from large scale surveys, Sir has also worked in applied multivariate uh, analysis, demographic methods, and applied econometrics in the field of demography and population studies. So now let me introduce uh, our postgraduate trainees uh, who will present today's seminar. So Dr. Ribu Jhon from Bharti Vidya Peet Medical College, Pune, and Dr. Robinson B. Thomas from Armed Forces Medical College, Pune. So without any further delay, let's dive right into the seminar. So I will uh, give it to Dr. Ribu and Dr. Robinson. So over to you, Dr. Ribu and Dr. Robinson. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the seminar. Today, uh, Dr. Robinson Thomas and myself, Dr. Ibu John, will be presenting the methodology of uh, National Family Health Survey 5. So, uh, in this seminar, you will be able to understand the objectives of National Family Health Survey 5, to, uh, and you'll be able to understand the sampling of population, like how the sampling uh, size was calculated, how the methodology of uh, sampling was done and to understand the methods of uh, data collection and data processing. And also you will get to know about the various indicators that were measured in National Family Health Survey 5. I will start with the presentation and uh, I will uh, present the first part of the presentation, which includes the introduction, uh, survey objectives and study sample, following which Dr. Robinson will present the second part, which includes the data collection, quality assurance, data processing, and key indicators. So let's start the seminar with the introduction. National Family Health Survey 5, which uh, further I'll be referring to as NFHS 5, is a national survey which has gathered data on population, health, and nutrition in India. And it has included data from all the states and all the union territories and 707 districts as of March 31st, 2017. And this survey was conducted by 17 field agencies and it collected information from 6,36,699 households 7,24,115 women and 1,1839 men. Coming to the timeline, National Family Health Survey was conducted in five rounds. 
The first round was conducted from 1992 to 1993. The second round was conducted from 1998 to 1999. Uh, the third round was conducted from 2005 to 2006. Uh, fourth round was conducted from uh, 2015 to 2016. And the recent round, that's the uh, fifth round, was conducted from 2019 to 2021. NFHS 5 was conducted in two phases. That is, the first phase was conducted from June 17, 2019 to January 30, 2020. And the first phase has covered 17 states and unit, five unit territories. Whereas the second phase was conducted uh, from January 2, 2020 to April 30, 2021. And that has covered yes, 11 states and three unit territories. So coming to the collaborators, uh, NFHS 5 is mainly done by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, that is the Government of India. And the nodal agency for uh, NFHS 5 was International Institute for Population Science. The other collaborators were ICF and ICMR. The technical assistance were provided by USAID, who has provided support uh, with uh, demographic health surveillance. And NFHS 5 has a uh, HIV component. And the assistance for the HIV component was provided by National Aid Control Organization and National AIDS uh, Research Institute, Pune. Coming to the sustainable development goals that uh, NFHS 5 has covered, when NFHS 4 has covered only 28 SDG indicators, NFHS 5 has covered 34 SDG indicators. So what were the survey objectives? Survey objectives were to provide, uh, uh, the survey was basically conducted to provide or to collect data on uh, health and family welfare, and also on uh, upcoming issues like uh, levels of fertility, infant and child mortality, maternal and child health, and various other health and family welfare issues. So come, let's see the study sample. In study sample, I will be covering the sampling size as well as the sampling methodology. So coming to the sample size, before talking about sample size, I would like to make a point that uh, NFHS 5 was divided into two modules. It was divided into a state module as well as a uh, uh, district module. So uh, there were several indicators of National Family Health Survey by which they took, which they considered for calculating the sample size. And uh, the main focus was on uh, the number of pregnancies that has led to a live birth. Especially under National Health Mission, there has been a, an increasing focus on maternal and child health. So they actually uh, considered several factors like uh, um, immunization, number of live pregnancies, uh, uh, number of uh, births, all of this were considered. Finally, they decided to consider number of ANC visits as a key indicator for calculating sample size. So they calculated, they took data from NFHS 4 and found out that the prevalence of ANC visit was least in the state of Bihar and they had three plus ANC visit, the prevalence was 24.7 percentage. So initially it was decided, as I mentioned, that it has taken data from all 707 districts. So initially it was decided that uh, they will take 43 primary sampling units from all the 707 districts. But the Technical Advisory Committee revised this because they found out that there is a relative standard error of 4 plus ANC visit in various districts across the country. And they found out that uh, this uh, RSC was more than 10% in over 60% of districts in seven states like Bihar, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, and Uttarakhand. So in order to sort out this issue, what they did was they added two extra uh, primary sampling units in these seven states alone. And they did this and uh, assuming that there would be an increase in two percentage points in prevalence of four plus ANC visits in this district during the period uh, from 2015 to 18. That is, from the previous National Family Health Survey to the current National Family Health Survey, they have assumed that the prevalence or the percentage of four plus ANC visits would have increased. So uh, with that they have added two additional PSU and the same assumption because uh, this they thought that the relative standard error of more than 10 percent would have reduced uh, from 260 districts to 17 districts, which is why except for these seven uh, states and all other states, they have included only 42 primary sampling units per district. So this was the uh, formula that was used for calculating the sample size where uh, n is equal to 1 into 1 minus p by alpha square p into d, where n is the desired sample size and p is the prevalence of the variable. Alpha is the desired relative uh, standard error and D is the design effect. They have uh, taken 1.29 as a value for the design effect. So as I mentioned before, uh, National Family Health Survey 5, NFHS 5, was divided into a state module as well as a district module. 
all of it was covered in district module, but there were uh, four uh, extra information that were covered exclusively in the state module, which were the husband's background and the women's work and the knowledge on uh, HIV and AIDS, their sexual attitude and behavior and domestic violence. So these information were covered only at state level. So how did they calculate the sample size for the state level? How they did it was out of the district module, they took a cluster, a random cluster of 30% from which they took 15% uh, of the household. That is from the 30% of the uh, sample of the district module, they interviewed every alternate house for the state module. So that is in district module, as I mentioned, there were 707 districts. Initially, it was planned to conduct a survey in 30,456 primary sampling units. But however, later a field work, finally it was done only 30,198 primary sampling units. And as I said, in the state module, uh, from the district sample, 30% of the uh, district sample was randomly selected, from which 15% of the household was taken. That is every alternate household was chosen. So now let's see the sample design. How did they go about uh, conducting the study? I mean, what was the design followed for conducting the uh, survey? So as you know, the National Family Health Survey uh, includes the population. It's a survey of the population of whole of India. And population of India is a very heterogeneous population. So which is why they followed stratified sampling. So as I said, district was taken. And each district was divided into uh, an urban strata as well as a rural strata. And in the first stage, the urban strata was divided into census enumeration block and the rural strata was divided into village. And in district, including the urban as well as rural, there were 42 primary sampling units, except those uh, seven states that I mentioned, which had 45 primary sampling units. So uh, after they chose the, the census enumeration block as well as the villages, then in the second stage, they chose a 20 household per sampling unit. So the whole sampling frame that was taken for uh, conducting the survey was a 2011 census. So as I mentioned, it was divided into rural stratum as well as an urban stratum. So coming to the rural stratum, each rural stratum was then uh, divided into three explicit strata based on the number of households. And these three explicit strata was again subdivided into six equal substrata based on the number of uh, scheduled caste and scheduled tribe population. There was implicit stratification also that was done based on female literacy. Suppose if a primary sampling unit had uh, less than 40 households, they were linked to the nearest primary sampling unit in order to make, make the number correct. And final uh, sampling was done with PPS system sampling. Coming to the urban areas, as I said, it was divided into census enumeration block. And the information regarding census enumeration block was obtained from the Office of Registrar General and Census Commission in New Delhi. And again, similar to the uh, rural uh, villages, census enumeration block was also sorted based on the uh, percentage of scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. And here also sample CAP was selected based on PPS system sample. So uh, before conducting an actual survey, every uh, primary sampling unit, they had a complete list of household where they were actually going to conduct the main survey. So suppose if a primary sampling unit had a uh, like 300 uh, households, they divided it into equal uh, number of households, like 100, 100, 100 household or 150, 150 households. So they divided. And out of this division, they randomly took uh, two segments for the survey. So in this way, NFHS5 cluster is either a primary sampling unit or it's a segment of the primary sampling unit. And then, yeah, so this was the first stage of division. So in the second stage of division, as I mentioned, they have taken uh, 20 households. Actually, they had decided they've chosen 22 households, but they interviewed only 20 households. The reason for 22 households was in case of 10 percentage of non responsiveness. So coming to data collection, I'm handing over to Dr. Robinson. Thank you. Dr. Robinson, just check your mic, uh, mic. you just unmute yourself. <clears throat> okay, fine. Thank you. Yes. The protocol for the NFHS 5 survey, including the content of all survey questionnaire, was approved by IIPS Institutional Review Board and ICF Institutional Review Board. The, pro 
protocol was reviewed by US CDC. Four survey questions such as household demand and biomarker can rise in eight and six. These are our four questions. Uh, in household, we ask uh, all usual. We are not able to hear you. Uh, Dr. In women's questionnaire, we interviewed all eligible women registered only in the subsample men of age group 15 to 54 years. Waist and hip circumference, hemoglobin, BP, sure. Additional blood was a drop malarial parasite and vitamin in household questionnaire basic demographics collected on the characteristics of each persons listed such as age sex marital status schooling ownership of an aadhar card tobacco use alcohol consumption disabilities in relation uh, relationship to the head of the household in socio economic characteristics we ask them about water sanitation and hygiene water treatment the type of or toilet facility, the type of cooking for fuel used, the material used for the floor, roof and wall of the dwelling unit, ownership of various durable goods, health insurance coverage, land ownership, number of deaths in the household in the last two years preceding the survey, ownership and use of mosquito net. For children under age, uh, uh, age less than five, information was collected on whether each child had birth certificate or whether the birth was registered with the civil authority. In women questionnaire, uh, uh, we ask them of the background characteristics in which we ask them about their age, literacy, schooling, religion, caste, tribe, and media exposure. For reproduction part, we ask them about the number of children ever born, birth history, current pregnancy, and pre any termination of pregnancy. We also ask them about the history of hysterectomy. In menstrual hygiene, we ask them about the uh, hygiene methods, hygienic methods of protection used during menstrual period. For family planning, we ask them knowledge and use of contraceptives, sources of contraceptive methods, information on family planning. And we also ask them about whether any community health worker ever made any contact with them. For maternal and childhood health, breastfeeding and nutrition, we ask them about the ANC visits, delivery care, PNC, postpartum amenorrhea, use of uh, oral rehydration therapy, breastfeeding and child feeding, vaccination coverage, prevalence and treatment of diarrhea, along with the utilization of ICDS services. For ma marriage and fertility, we ask them about the marital status, age at first marriage, polygamy, any consanguinity present in the household, age at first uh, sexual intercourse, recent sexual activity, number and type of sexual partner, use of condom. For fertility preferences, we ask them about their desire for more children, their, uh, their ideal number of children they think about, any gender preferences for children, any intention to use family planning. In women's empowerment, we ask them about a household who is the decision making authority we also asked women about the uh, uh, ownership of a bank account oblique savings account which they themselves use whether they have a mobile phone which they themselves use and ownership of land for hiv and aids we asked them about the knowledge of hiv and aids knowledge of methods of hiv transmission sources of hiv information ways to avoid uh, hiv Previous any history of HIV testing, any stigma related to HIV. Domestic violence, we asked 
uh, one eligible woman per household randomly selected and if any uh, history of gender violence or spousal violence was present we provided them with a list of appropriate local or, uh, organization in men questionnaire we along with the background characteristics we asked them about their marriage employment and uh, whether do they accompany lay, pregnant lady to uh, uh, for their anc visit any fertility preferences sexual behavior and attitude towards uh, gender role any history of tobacco or alcohol use along with the uh, knowledge of tuberculosis now coming to the biomarker in this for children we measured height weight and hemoglobin levels for women aged 15 to 49 years and men aged 15 to 54 years we measured height weight waist and hip circumference and hemoglobin levels blood pressure and random blood um, glucose measurement was done for women and uh, men aged 15 years and above bp was measured by omron bp monitor uh, random blood sugar was measured by acucheck glucometer height was measured by uh, seca 213 stadiometer it was measured by seca 814 digital scale waist hip circumference was measured by gulic tape few additional drops of blood from fingerprint was taken for laboratory testing of uh, for uh, hv a1c and malarial parasite and vitamin d3 all eligible um, men and women were given referral card the results of all measurements and tests were immediately given to the respondents in the field along with info brochure results explain were explained to respondents by the specially trained investigator who had conducted the test now coming to the data act quality a pre test was conducted during the uh, period of november to december 2017 training of investigator investigators for pre test was held at iips mumbai pre test field work was conducted in five enumeration areas four rural one urban in and around thane taluka that had not been selected for the main survey pre test was conducted in hindi speaking areas of thane district followed by debriefing session for the field agent, uh, field teams in all 38 interviewers and 11 health investigators participated in the training pretest field practice covered 95 uh, household interviews 107 women's interview 59 men's interview biomarker me- measurements and testing were conducted on 50 children and 126 adults training of field staff was conducted in a tiered fashion for each of the two field work phases the uh, training of traders top course was conducted the first phase uh, which included 17 states and five union territory it was uh, a course was conducted in goa from 22nd april to 12th may 2019 the second phase top course was conducted in chandigarh from october 5th to 24 2019 the trainees included project coordinators health coordinators statisticians demographers Uh, information technology coordinators from field agencies project uh, senior uh, project officers from iips the coordinators from field agencies were responsible for training field workers at the state and ut level now coming to the field work nfhs 5 field work was conducted by field agencies in two phases the first phase was conducted from 17 june 2019 to 30th january 2020 the second phase was conducted from 2nd january 20 2020 to 30th april 2021 in states included in each phase field work was conducted in a group of five hc districts at a time to facilitate close mo- close monitoring and supervision of the training of the field staff and implementation of the field work field supervisors was uh, responsible for overall management of field teams he used uh, he conducts sports checks to ver- verify the accuracy of key information he also maintains uniform procedures across states whenever uh, data is synchronized in field supervisors uh, uh, computer 
uh, he uh, project officers run a query tool named project officers query report algorithm which helps to identify any potential gaps or any inconsist inconsistencies in the information if found ieps a project officer will observe interview in sub sample of households and back checks with the respondents to verify for the quality of field work immediate correction uh, corrective measures were taken in case there were any deviation from survey protocols monitoring and supervision was done under the aegis of ministry of health and family welfare government and the government of india along with the district coordinators from field agencies senior staffs at state offices of the field agencies two ip iips uh, project officers uh, who are positioned with each field agencies for entire duration of survey uh, uh, senior project officers and project officers and pro co faculty coordinated coordinators in iips along with staff and consultants from icf now coming to the capi capi and transfer of field data to iips on a daily basis was instrumental in remotely monitoring progress of field teams capi helps to run extensive data quality checks on the data from the field and provide real time feedbacks to field agencies and teams to help help improve data quality it has an inbuilt mechanism to select an appropriate interview language for the region it says incomplete questionnaire which provides an opportunity to complete the interview in multiple session and reduce respondents fatigue it also helps in the data synchronization along with the poqr2 now coming to the field check tables the standard set of uh, 44 field check tables on 51 indicators were produced frequently through field work covering topics such as response rate age heaping and age displacement also it looked for any completeness of reporting sex ratios for children patterns of height and weight measurement was also looked upon along with contraceptive prevalence rate now come let's come to the data processing part data processing in this uh, electronic data was collected uh, electronic data collected was received on a daily basis via sin cloud system at iips was done whenever there was a, a, requir a requir uh, requirement of re to resolve computer identified inconsistencies and coding of open ended question which was conducted in field by field agencies and at the field agency's central office finally iips checks secondary edits before finalizing the data set there were few key indicators for nfhs 5 survey which were population and household profile marriage and fertility family planning maternal health care infant and child mortality and childhood uh, vaccination and illness now let's summarize today's seminar nfhs 5 uh, was conducted uh, during the year 2019 to 2021 which gathered data on population health and nutrition in india stratified sampling method was followed in this survey in total 42 primary sampling units in 70 districts were done data was collected using questionnaire and capi quality assurance was maintained through training monitoring and field check tables now uh, let's see uh, nfhs 5 uh, provided information for 707 districts 28 states and 8 union territories funding was done by ministry of health and family welfare uh, along with demographic and health survey program of usaid icmr uh, national aids research institute pune nfhs 5 field work was conducted in two phases phase 1 was conducted from 17 june 2019 to 30 january 2020 which covered 17 states and 5 union territories The phase two was conducted from 2nd January 2020 to 30th April 2021, covering 11 states and three union territories. 
NFHS 5 gathered information from 636,699 household along uh, which included interviewing 7,24,115 women and 1,1839 men. NFHS 5 survey was completed by 17 field agencies which comprised of 1,061 field teams. Each field team consisted of one field supervisor, three female interviewers, one male interviewer, two health investigators, and a driver. Remote, a remote progress monitoring was done by CAPI and transfer of field data to IAPS on a daily basis. These were our references for today's seminar. Thank you all. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, that was a really interesting and informative presentation by Dr. Rigu and Dr. Robinson. I'm sure that our audience has got a better perspective of NFHS 5 methodology now. We'd like to hear from our facilitator, Lakshmi Khan, sir, about the presentation and anything he likes to add. Sir? Yeah, yeah, thank you. I think uh, both Dr. Rigu and Dr. Robinson have made very good presentation. And they have covered all the aspects. We really uh, surprised to me that being a medical professional, they have covered each and every dimension of the NFHS 5. So starting from uh, designing the survey, computation of sample size to the questionnaire and other content. So uh, they have covered everything. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm since you are the medical professional, so I want to shift in the biomarker a little bit. What do you, uh, just I have a few uh, comments with the, what do you think that? Uh, then, like they, you are collecting the biomarker of the hyper, uh, hypertension, diabetes, and anemia. And maybe some of the DVS for the uh, anti malaria WS assistance and um, HbA1c1 and other for the ICMAR, so we are collecting this biomarker. And what do you think about this uh, uh, hypertension and blood glucose, where you are uh, going in the field, selecting the household, and there is no fasting, and so it is like a random uh, blood glucose collection is there for the, uh, for the uh, diabetes. So, and for the, uh, uh, for hypertension also, we don't know just you are doing the field and maybe you are taking the three readings and you are taking the average of last two readings and the time interval between the first and second reading you are fixing the 10 10 minutes or five minutes uh, five to ten minutes so i don't know what do you think that to what extent our data would be the reliable measuring the blood glucose and hypertension then i will come to the enemy in the next one what is your view on that? Anyone maybe that the presenter from the uh, either Dr. Robinson or Dr. Review, if they wanted to make any comments on that point. Sir, in current age, what we have seen, like there is an emergence of non-communicable diseases. So we wanted to look for uh, any uh, pre uh, like um, about, uh, we look. We wanted to look for hypertension and diabetes prevalence rate. So that was our main target, which would help further in the formulating of health policies in later stages. So these were our main uh, idea behind conducting this test, sir, which I believe. Sir, yeah, but to what extent yeah. it will be the uh, different from the hospital-based data versus. Uh, uh, community based data, which is the large scale data you are collecting from the more than six household, households. So, what do you think in that perspective? The it will so be okay that per because you don't have a fasting, uh, you just uh, you are collecting the random blood glucose, I think. That is the, yeah. Sir, I think it will be, uh, it will give more clearer picture. Okay, okay. And the other one is that regarding the anemia, you are collecting from the you know that is that there is a venous blood versus capillary that, uh, and then if you take the gold standard, that is the venous uh, 
as compared to the capillary has some disadvantage. So what do you think that in the large scale survey, you are collecting the blood of the under six years old child, under five years old children and uh, 50 to 49 years women and men, you are collecting from the uh, capillary method. You are picking the blood from the thumb or other, any, any finger, so then you are collecting the blood and you are uh, identifying that with a particular individual is anemic or not. So, uh, and, uh, it is not possible to collect the blood from the venous in the large scale survey. So there are many limitations are there to collect it. So what do you think, what is your view on this? Uh, whether you are meeting from the, your background, what do you refer about the uh, comparison of the uh, two comparison of anemia from these two methods of uh, collecting the blood, venous versus capillary? Uh, sir, I, I think uh, um, uh, uh, since it was a large scale study, it is not possible actually ideally to collect uh, mean a sample because we, uh, since we are going out into the community, we need to use a device or uh, screening method that is acceptable to the society. So, uh, I think that the collection of capillary or blood to measure anemia is more appropriate than uh, capillary to measure the anemia. Yeah, you are right. Uh, that's why so actually there is a lot of discussion happens in NFHS 6 now. Anemia has been brought from the NFHS 6 animals. The reason behind that was we are not collecting the blood samples from venous. That is the gold standard. So uh, the idea is that we have limited a lot. You know that uh, not possible in the large scale survey to collect it, the venous. So there is a, any other issue to be from the field. Uh, they they help us, but maybe our investigators are trained, but they are not that trained, that much trained enough to collect the blood blood in the field. So there are many issues are there in your system, but ultimately uh, it has been dropped from the NFHS since. That's why I was thinking, what is your opinion about? So those who understand the large scale survey, actually it is really so uh, not possible to do. So I appreciate your comments that one. And regarding, I think that was the many other videos are there where the medical professor they can use that data for the analyzing, uh, for the analysis or writing the uh, report uh, or I maybe writing the, some of the papers on that issue because with the blood pressure and the diabetes you are collecting from all the household members from the group of nurses and you are, you are ask, also, also asking from the whether have you you are diagnosed with uh, hypertension or diabetes, so reporting is also there, and you are also collecting the sample. So based on this one, one can compare it. One can do some research in that area. So not, uh, I don't know. I means uh, the other survey sample design. Maybe this is the our own area how to frame the question. Are but the there are many scopes are there for the medical practitioner also where they can analyze the data in that aspect and they can contribute in this. Uh, in the discussion or in the in the NFHS also, so they are so you are providing a lot of information based on the biomarker and some of the information for the uh, cancer is also there, like uh, cervix uh, cancer uh, and there are many other questions related to TB and lung cancer. I think so. There are so many questions are there in that aspect. So section number seven, other health issue, that is the one area and the other this biomarker that could be analyzed by the medical researcher those who are uh, in different field so again you have a another large scale survey that is the LASI that is the longitudinal aging study in India so from that data also you could analyze in detail uh, analysis of uh, that component have, so there are a lot of different components are there including lung, um, uh, lungs cancer and other I think so there are many informations are there so I mean to say uh, the main aim of NFHS is not to just to collect the data it is also to analyze the data by the researcher in their own perspective in their own idea if they have an idea that could be done easily so any the data is very much user friendly generally IPS conduct the survey uh, after that one you are conducting the workshop of one week two week duration 
and maybe uh, so in the, in the recent maybe in the last three four months I have visited many issues like in the ICMR, ICMR Bhunusar, RMRC Bhunusar, and then other issues of the SRM University and Kerala University where we have given the training to the uh, public health experts about the, how to use the data, how best they can use and they can analyze it based on the, their own idea. So that could also be done it, I mean to say, maybe for their master dissertation and other work could also be done based on the NFHS data. That is the one of the my, main aim which also I wanted to highlight here. Otherwise, whatever she has presented and Dr. Robinson has presented it nicely, they have covered each and every dimension. But if you look at the questionnaire, it will provide a lot of opportunity uh, to write a paper, to write a dissertation or maybe even sometimes thesis could also be done on based on large only secondary data. Maybe you can supplement by the primary data, but it, it provides a lot of opportunity. So anything, if you have any very specific question, so you can ask it, otherwise they have covered complete uh, uh, overview of the NFHS, they have covered it. So. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Rajesh, there has been not any question yet. Uh, so, um, I don't see any questions, sir. Yeah, any, 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 you have any idea about this Z score? Maybe if you can comment it, I don't know. Z score of like uh, child stunting and wasting, you are measuring by the Z score. So, there is sometimes debate is there what reference population you are choosing. That is not comparable to the India. So, anyone would like to comment on that dimension? If you have it. Otherwise, it is okay from my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Rebu or Dr. Robinson, you want to take that or you want to comment something? Yes, sir. Yes, I have knowledgeable enough to comment on. Okay. So uh, since there are no questions, so uh, I'll just ask, uh, how was your experience? Just briefly, uh, since you uh, presented this. Uh, this was our first time uh, presenting on a national platform and it was a wonderful experience. And uh, we actually got to learn also uh, more. We actually went into depth of national family health service. So that was also a good thing. And yeah, it was a good experience. Okay. It was a wonderful experience. Sir, yeah. sir, we would like to thank all our friends, seniors, colleagues, sir, who had helped us in the preparation leading to this uh, seminar also, sir, along with our faculties, statisticians, everyone, sir. So it gave us a golden opportunity to present ourselves in front of uh, everyone, sir. So we look forward to more presentations in future also, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I thank uh, Dr. Vibhu and Dr. Jo uh, Robinson. And I also thank uh, Lakshmi Khan, sir, so much, sir, for your time and effort in fine-tuning their presentation, despite your busy schedule. So as uh, we are uh, drawing this session, we're coming to an end. So on behalf of our coordinating team, I would extend heartfelt gratitude to Dr. A. Adri, sir, National President, IAPS. Dr. Purushatan Giri, sir, Secretary General IAPSM, and our uh, other IAPSM office bearers for providing us the uh, platform for this academic feast. And I would uh, also request our coordinating team to switch on their videos for a moment, please. Yes. I have put just, just a minute because that you have uh, taken the name of Kadri sir. So at yes, that sir. time, uh, you have estimated the full immunization in the Gujarat. Uh, uh, and then it was uh, found to be around uh, 60, 55 to 60 percent, which, which was much lower than they expected, uh, what, they, they, what they are expecting that one. So then they have invited me. So I went there, we have designed the survey. They have conducted the one very independent survey of the only on the full immunization. So they have estimated and they have under the leadership of the Kadri sir only. So they have estimated. So they found that it was not, it is very close to the what NFHS school provides. 
Now, in MH5, there is a big jump from there. So, they have conducted almost the same type of survey in the Gujarat in the year 2016-17. He was taking the he was taking the leadership, he was the main person behind the conducting the that survey. So yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. You have patiently listened to us and given your valuable time. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I, uh, going on, I will also like to uh, thank Dr. Parag Chavda, sir, Dr. Prachet Raghubir, sir, Dr. Satavdi Mitra, ma'am, and uh, Dr. Kaushik Damu. They have worked uh, very hard uh, behind the scene also and for the quality execution of the session. And this is possible because of uh, all of our uh, diligent efforts. And uh, in the end, audience, uh, I would request you to kindly uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel and get regular notifications of all our e-connect activities by the Academia APA, IAPSM. We also encourage you to become a member of IAPSM and contribute to this uh, learning platform. So let's meet again in the next PG seminar with more interesting topics. Till then, enjoy learning and thank you and goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Hello? Yeah. <laughs>